Welcome back to Student Tutorials. In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can interface with the T6 monitor using the Arduino IDE. Okay, we're going to get straight into it this time, no pictures. The T6 sensor is really easy to connect, so I didn't particularly think it was worth doing showing where, how mine's been set up. What you do need to know, though, is where you've connected to your T6 sensor. In other words, what pins you've put your lines into on the Arduino. Um, that's really important, so we're going to need to define that. First, though, we need to include the library that we downloaded before for the T6 sensor. Otherwise, it's not going to work, is it? So, hashtag include t6.h. Very straightforward. Okay. Next, we need to actually define where we've connected the T6 sensor, like I said before. The important pins for this are the data supply and the voltage supply pins. So, note whereabout you've connected them on your Arduino. For me, I've connected them on pin 8 and 2. So to define that, we're going to write tsec, which is accessing the tsec library. And we're going to write sensor 1. Again, this is accessing sensor 1. And we're going to write 8, 2. Now, all this is saying is that my data line is connected to pin 8 on the Arduino, and my voltage supply is connected to pin 2 on the Arduino. Make sure it is in this order Otherwise, it will not work. It needs to be data supply and then voltage supply. Anyway, that's that out of the way. But next, we need to define two different variables. The first is probably a data type that you haven't actually seen before unless you studied computer science. And it's a uint16 underscore t. Now, what is that, you may ask? Well, all it is is an integer. But it's a slightly different integer. Normally, if we were to just write int and then declare a variable, the size of that variable would be taking up 32 bits of memory, up to, up to 32 bits of memory. Now, this is a bit of a problem when it comes to little sensors like a TSIC, because they can't necessarily transfer that much data. So instead, what we've defined here is a 16-bit integer, which is fine. And anyway, we're not going to be using more than 16 bits of memory, anywhere near that, for our numbers, because it's just some temperature data. So this is going to be totally fine for our use. It's just sort of making sure it's OK. Anyway, we're going to give it the name temperature 1. And we're just going to set it equal to 0. Now, this is the memory location that the temperature data is actually going to be stored in. So we need to define this so we can use it later on in our code. The next thing we need to define is the variable where we're going to store our temperature. Let's see. So it's going to define a float, because obviously we have decimal places in the temperature. And we're just going to call it temperature underscore C. So a temperature in C. I'm going to also set that equal to zero for now. Great. OK. Next, as I say, to always do, if you're ever using the serial monitor, serial.begin at 9,000 seconds about. Great. And that's actually all we need to put in the setup this time. Next, what we're going to have to do is a little conditional statement. And we haven't had to do that yet for our any of our sensors, but for this one, we actually do. For this library in particular, perhaps there's other libraries that work differently, but for this one, this is the way to do it. What we're going to write is if sensor1.get temperature and then put and temperature1 and then we've got brackets where we're going to put our statement. Actually, I didn't need to put that there. Now, what is this saying? is if I get the temperature from memory location 0 from the sensor, and there is a temperature inside that, so there is actually a value that's inside that um, memory location, then I want to do something. You might not have seen sort of a statement like this before, and it does look a little weird, but it holds true for any variable or anything like that. You could put, say, you I don't know, you're counting the number of pizzas you've made. You could put if number of pizzas, and then a statement. And what that statement would do is, if there's any pizzas at all, then it would do something. But if there's no pizzas, then it wouldn't. So it's just checking whether the variable actually has anything inside it or not. OK, next, we're actually going to get the temperature. So this is, just, this is just checking if there is a temperature. But next, we actually need to pass that to a variable. So we're going to set our variable temperature underscore c. And we're going to set that equal to sensor one dot calc underscore Celsius. 
that's not how you spell Celsius, and pass, again, a temperature one memory location into it. What this is doing is we're accessing sensor one, and we're getting the temperature in Celsius from memory location zero. Uh, this little ampersand in front of both of these, it just means we're passing that variable by reference. So instead of making a copy of the variable, we actually give a reference to where that variable is stored. And that's quite important because we're talking about memory locations here. Anyway, that's all the code to access the thermometer. It's probably the easiest out of the three. So the last thing to do to, to actually see what you're doing is we're just going to do serial dot print print line and then put your variable that you stored in. And just run that, Make sure, making sure your Arduino is connected. Should work. And you'll see that temperature data should start popping up. Yep. It's the same temperature that it was before as when I did this earlier, but it's hitting about 21.2, 21.3-ish. Which is good. That seems reasonable. That's, that's expected. So it's obviously working right, and that's about the temperature of this room. But anyway, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how you can actually get all that data from the temperature sensors and actually store it in a usable way so you can graph it and analyze it and things. And we're going to be using a little program called Putty to do that. Um, it's very easy to use, so don't worry about that. Anyway, thanks for watching.